Hi there, I've been uh, working on this uh, Wi-Fi travel router on the Raspberry Pi for a few vacations now. Um, uh, the main motivation here is getting Wi-Fi access uh, behind a corner so you can place it somewhere else and not have to sit in uh, an awkward place. The other is that uh, a lot of the camping and resorts have a Wi-Fi access by code which applies to a single device. Uh, so having this apply to the connection from the Raspberry Pi instead of your phone means you can connect all the phones and the tablets to the Raspberry Pi and have it work this way. So it was very basic at first and it's gotten a little better. So we now have a uh, web page which is refreshing. It shows you the speed for up and down. Um, and this is mostly automatically generated depending on the speed of the actual wireless connection. Um, so if you leave it for, for like five minutes or a speed test you'll see something resembling the real life speed of the connection. Four icons here you have the access point on the bottom, uh, working DNS icon on the uh, top, the, the second. The third is if you have an actual internet connection or if there is a captive portal and it will show you here. And the fourth is the icon for the VPN connection. Because a lot of resorts use open Wi-Fi networks. Those generally uh, is a bad idea to send sensitive data over. So it, I have a VPN connection from the Raspberry Pi to my home, which could also be anywhere else, really, um, to encrypt all the traffic that's sent over it. Uh, convenient side note, I can also access my stuff at home. The second icon is for uh, the network interfaces. You can set some basic information here, like the required IP addresses. Uh, it also lists the state of the various uh, connections and interfaces. You have the access point configurations. Um, it's set out to channel 48 now on 5 gigahertz. This is my preferred choice because it doesn't interfere with anything. And 2.4 is generally used by pretty much everything else. Garage door openers, baby phones, that sort of thing. Deck sets, etc. So yeah, it works better this way. Here you have a list of the wireless interfaces and if you go down you can also see that it lists all the wireless networks and you can easily copy it into the other networks. Uh, shouldn't generally be required but it's possible and you can also uh, of course connect a protected wireless network. Icon number four is for the uh, open VPN connection. Um, it's the only one supported at this moment. Uh, and I might add something uh, something else in the future, uh, something like external or wire guard, but at this point in time I only use OpenVPN, so this is the only one it has. And we have uh, the last page is more of a general diagnostics page. You have some uh, log files here which shows you uh, the general activity of the agent uh, that actually controls all the settings. Some of the access points logs from host APD. Do you have the open VPN logs for the connection? So that's pretty much what you can expect. If you go to the home screen, you also can scroll down and you can see the actually connected clients. So it's pretty brief. Uh, if you use the uh, Raspberry Pi in combination with a Hyperpixel 4 screen, you can uh, run the, I think it is the setup kiosk. Uh, .sh uh, sh uh, shell script which will set up a kiosk user for you and a fully fledged version of this on the actual screen on the Raspberry Pi with the screen saver that automatically refreshes all the time. So if you have it on the camping you can easily glance if the network or any form of connectivity is basically working at any point in time. Uh, no idea if this is useful to anyone else, might be, and uh, if you enjoy this, please leave a comment uh, below. Cheers!